So thank you very much for the introduction. So I'll be talking about uh, scalable event processing with WSO to CEP. So until now, we didn't have a really scalable solution. So this is the first time we are bringing a scalable solution to you uh, with WSO2 CEP in place. So in this talk, I will talk about what and why we need a complex event processor and the scalability and edge computing capabilities of CEP and some use cases and what's new in WSO2 complex event processor 4.0. So what is CEP? So we gather the data from multiple data stores, correlate the data, and we correlate not just at, at that time, we correlate over time. So that's, that's the main part. So we have a temporal aspect on that. And we find interesting occurrence, and we have to notify them. So we are going to do this all on real time. So this all has to happen in real time, so that's the main and most important aspect of that. So what's the difference between a CEP and a database? So in database, you all know, we have the data stored in the database, and then we run the queries on top of it. But CEP is completely upside down, where we store the queries on the CEP, and then we run the data over that. So that's the main idea behind the CEP and database that you have to like, keep in mind. So why we need a CEP? Currently, the amount of data that we process is becoming bigger and bigger. Now, we have a lot of sensors, uh, the smart devices, and even in the business, you have a lot of, uh, all, the, all the organizations are computerized, so you have lots and lots of data. So we have to process all of those stuff. And we may not need to store all of those things. Some data may only be valid for a certain time. So it's no point of storing those data. And more than that, we don't need uh, data for a long time. We just need for some time, we need just some processing, and we just need to throw it out. So on these cases, we can use CEP. And more, more importantly, if it is a time-critical act, then CEP is a must-use thing. So for example, online advertisement. And then for uh, railway or logistics management. So these stuff are really, really important in these uh, places, these time-critical apps will really need a complex event processor. So as Rina discussed, CEP can receive from various transport on various data formats, and we can receive them, and we receive the data, and we categorize those data into streams. And then when we have a stored data, like stored query, we run the execution logics on that, and we produce output as streams back. So those output streams can be back mapped back into several data formats, and to via different transports, we can push them out. So uh, with the next release, we are introducing a WebSocket and MQTT Kafka support. So if you, some customers are waiting for those stuff, so I think for them it will be a good uh, chance. And if you take the architecture, it's very simple. So we have event receivers, basically to receive the events. And as Srinath mentioned, the stream is a core capability of DAS and CEP. So we have the streams defined. So all the data that comes in will become streams. And we have event processors that fetch those streams. And we do processing and produce output streams, which will go back to the stream component, where the another event processor can use it. Or we can push that to publishers, which will eventually go outside. So these event receivers and event publishers have several adapters that you can write your own custom adapter if you have a proprietary API. And there are lots of uh, open available ones as well. So if we take the core capabilities of CEP, we have filters, uh, transformations. So that is the basic stuff. And then we can also do windows and aggregation. For example, I want to calculate the five minutes average last five minutes average, and I want to take a decision on that. So that's the window and aggregation. And I want to join stuff. For example, uh, you have a transaction stream, and like there's a payment stream, and like purchase stream and a payment stream. So has every purchase have an appropriate payment? I want to join those streams and detect if there's any anomalies, and I have to notify ASAP. So that's uh, joins. And sequence and Patterns. So this is very important when it comes to CEP because 
the sequence and pattern cannot be done by any other systems other than CEP. For example, if you want to identify there's a continuous growth on a stock price or, or temperature for five minutes or, or so on, and or else so you can have a case where there's a small transaction followed by a huge transaction within a period of time. So in between there can be lots of other transactions. So these kind of stuff can be very easily written on uh, SID queries or basically CEP execution plans and which is like not out of the box available through any other systems in the world. So uh, that's uh, uh, the core capabilities of CEP and we also have event tables. So this is what we do with like when you have historic data and if you have real time data that you have to map to historic data and you have to like you have to look up some information like last five year average and you have to see how the current trend is going towards that. So if you have to do some historic analysis and if you want to merge that with real time, then we can use event table. So these are the stuff. So here you can see some of them are stateless. Some of them are stateful, but we do it in memory because we need performance. So that's all of those happens in, in memory. And some of them are stateful, but they are persistent because it's historic data. We are accessing the database. So you can see there are stateless stuff and stateful processing in CEP. So uh, we have to see whether how we are going to scale this CEP. So that's the main part of this talk. So uh, is it really complicated? So if it is just stateless, then we can horizontally scale it like, like ESB or, uh, or, a, or a service, it can just scale it. If it is really stateful, then that's the problem comes in. Then. And we also need performance with that. So that's the main problem that we are trying to solve with this. So we have horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. So vertical scaling is simply by uh, having one behind another. So you can have some filters on the top and have the complex stateful operation at the end. So those filters will reduce the event load so that the backend can process it much faster. And it will get only get the relevant messages. So that's vertical scaling. So if you want to horizontally scale, the stateless entities, you can just scale it. It's quite simple. But for the stateful stuff, it's not that easy to scale. So if you are an intelligent guy, then what you will do is, OK, I am calculating average. So average is about sum divided by the count. So I can do the sum and count in a distributed manner. And then I can basically do the sum divided by count. So if you are really intelligent enough, then you can do it that. OK, so you have to be uh, a smart guy to do that. So this is average is a simple case, but for most other cases. But when it comes to median, so that median stuff, you cannot scale at all. So there's no way that you can scale it. Like if you are even a smart guy, then you have to use approximate algorithms. So uh, there, there are problems that you cannot solve at all. So on those cases, the only way that you can, uh, you can scale is if and only if, if you can partition the whole data on some form. For example, I'm going to have different stock, by partitioned by the stock symbol or partitioned by the buildings, or household, or regions, or type of transactions, something. You have to pick something, and you have to partition it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So that's the main idea behind it. So you have to be able to partition your data by some form such that you can partition in a scalable manner, process in a scalable manner. So we are using a scalable event processing. So why not we use an existing scalable uh, processing engine? So we have Spark streaming, so it's, it's pretty good, and uh, it, has, it runs uh, uh, streaming on micro batches. But the main disadvantage of Spark is it doesn't support patterns and sequences. You have to uh, maybe like day, work, wait for a one day and calculate a correlation between two small entities. So Spark doesn't really support that kind of processing, and it, 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 its uh, SQL language also doesn't support it. So the other solution is, why not we use Storm? So Storm is more of a stream processing engine, so it does support uh, event by event processing so that we can wait for a long time and we can process stuff. So it is basically possible. 
So the advantages of Storm are it supports distributed processing, support partitioning, as I told you, and it is extendable. You can write Java code as much as you want, and you can do any stuff you want, and it's open source. So there are some disadvantages. One is you need to write Java code. Uh, you need to start from basic principles. So if you want to calculate last five minutes average, then you have to do start from the basic data structure. So that's is a very big burden for you. And the adaptation for change is going to be very, very high. So like if your business model changes, so you're, you're providing an offer on real time, now you, your model has changed. Now you have to go and write code. So that's not going to work. That's not going to work on real systems. So it does not support you governing the artifacts. And it, for, for an enterprise that is agile, it will be very, very hard. So what we do is the CP plus equals storm. So what we have done is we have basically fought to remove all these disadvantages and give you a better solution on top of that. So now you don't need to write Java code. We have a high-level language, which is a CDSQL-like language. And no need to start from basic principles, because we have a high-level overview of that. And now, since you have an SQL-like language, you can basically go and change stuff pretty fast, test it, and go to production. And you can govern the artifacts, artifacts by the toolboxes. So that's very, very powerful. So this is the picture Srinath told, showed you before as well. So we receive the events. We push it into the Storm cluster. We get back the events, and we send it out. So the, the receiving end of the CEP can be clustered, and it, you can have any, any number of CEP for receiving stuff and for publishing. So the CEP can also scale. So there is no, no issue on uh, re, uh, receiving and publishing, and also for managing purposes. So, so when we are scaling, so the CD was earlier in that event processor component. But now those event processes will talk to Storm, so those CD will be on the Storm. And that's how we do the scaling. So when we are scaling, the stateless entities will become uh, CD bolts, and we can just scale them. And if it is stateful, then we can partition them, and we can scale them as well. So we have three type of uh, nodes on Storm, which is the CD spout, the CD bolt, and the publisher, which will publish back to CEP so that we can send it out. So these are the three main entities that we have on Storm, which the CEP will automatically program them, wire them, and deploy as a topology on Storm uh, for processing. So uh, if you see the CD language, I'll just go through that in a brief, uh, on a brief uh, explanation. So here, you have a definition of stock string, a uh, symbol of string, volume of int and price of double. So you can think this as a table of infinite length table. So uh, the first query is like, I want to uh, get the price greater than 75. Only those stuff, I want to say them as high price stock stream. And for all the high price stock stream of window of within last 10 minutes, I'm going to take the sum of all the volumes. OK, so this will take all the streams, and I'm going to take the sum. But as I told you, you can, I can partition stuff. So here I'm doing a partition. So I'm partitioning the high price stock stream with symbol. So per symbol, I'm going to calculate the sum on a partition manner. OK? So the same query that comes in the begin and end. So it can have multiple queries as well. Uh, so now I'm going to distribute that. So what I simply have to do it is just put that distributed annotations, and that's all you have to need. Do. So if you can run the same code on a single node and on a distributed mode just by adding those two annotations. So those, those are the only two things that are going to differentiate your developer version of testing and on the Storm version of testing. OK? So, uh, so the first query, it's a stateless one. I'm going to parallel by three, so I'm going to run them on three parallel instances. And on the second one, I'm going to run on two. So so when you deploy this, CEP will identify, OK, the first one is a stateless processing entity. So it will send the events in a round robin manner to all of those three. And for the second one, it's a stateful entity. So and it is partitioned. So CEP will send them on a, uh, it identify the partitions and send the appropriate events to the appropriate partition for the partition to happen. So, so that's how like it's quite easy for you to start with. Uh, so 
Apart from that, we also have edge capabilities of CEP. So for example, now we ran not the whole CEP on Storm, we only ran the Siddhi Co engine on Storm, right? Similarly, you can also run that Siddhi Co engine on your edge devices. So if you have a lot of sensors, if you have routers, if you have smartphones, then you can basically run Siddhi on that, and those won't be just publishing all the data to you, but it will be much more intelligent enough, and it will only publish when and where it's necessary. So that will reduce the load on the network where you can process huge amount of data. Because CD is very powerful and it's very, but it's very, very small. It's just a Java program. But the only thing is like we have improved CD a lot. So like even if you're having a window, it doesn't store all the data on that event. So for example, you might have 25 different parameters and you are only interested in five parameters. So when you have a window of five minutes, it is not going to store all those 25 parameters. It's only store those five. So it is very optimized on memory and a lot of other stuff. So it's very lean on that side. So you can even run that on your mobile phones or things like that. So, so that's the power of CD. So you can use that and the edge computing devices. So that that's also another phase of uh, processing. So over and all in all, like we have uh, uh, lots of use cases like monitoring normal systems, financial trading, banking like credit card fraud detection. We have customers using for marketing like location-based advertising, logistics, uh, healthcare, e-commerce like online retailers to give you suggestions and offers. Uh, telecommunications, you identify the least used cells and you give offers on those stuff. And system automation like Apache Stratos use WSO2 CP for auto scaling and for a lot of IoT scenarios and many more. So I'm not going to come into details, but if you have any interesting use case and if you want to know how you can work with CEP to improve that, please feel free to talk to me so I, I can help you out on, on those aspects as well. So over and all, what you get with uh, CEP 4.0 is basically the distributed processing with Storm. We have improved the high availability. I have not talked about that here. Uh, and improve the CD query language even better, the performance of that. Uh, toolbox support, a real-time dashboard, WebSocket and MQTT support, and we also have templating support for, for higher management guys. It's very hard for them to go and edit queries. So what we do is we write this execution plan in a template format and give them a form-based UI. So they just want to go, they can go and tweak these queries from that nice UI which I have not shown you here. I can just do a click. Uh, so it allows you to configure different stuff, like uh, you can edit a template and you can give some parameters. It's, 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 so it's, it's, it's a predefined one. So uh, you can give some parameter and you can configure it. So internally, it will create an execution plan and so on and so forth. So. Uh, that's another thing that we support. Uh, and with, with all of those, we also have lots of lots of extensions for geo, time series, uh, machine learning, uh, natural language processing. Uh, so these are stuff that's coming in from with 4.0. And we have the alpha release, and you can go and check it out from uh, the product CEP releases at GitHub. It has the link for the download and the documentation.